super deep wheels offer some of the biggest aero gains that you can buy. So we got 10 of the best sets together across a range from 65 millimeters up to an enormous 95. And we took them out on the road for some real world testing and most importantly and excitingly to the wind tunnel at the University of Southampton where you were able to gain some absolutely definitive data on what is the fastest for your money. All but one of our wheels on test were clinchers and they included the DT Swiss 65 RRC, the NV 7.8, the Head Jet 6.9, the Knight Composites 95, the Mavic CXR 80 in tubular form, the Profile Design 2478, the Progress Space 88, the Roval CLX 64, the Vision Metrons in 55 and 81 mm combination, and last but certainly not least, the ZIP 808 NSWs. We tested all of the wheels at two angles, 5 degrees and 12 and a half degrees, simulating a very low crosswind angle and a higher angle, 12 and a half degrees being pretty much the maximum you'll ever see in a time trial or triathlon when you're riding a speed. We fitted our test wheels with a control tyre, the brand new Michelin Power 4 competition clincher here in 25mm to suit the wide aero shapes of these wheels. The exception was the Mavic CXR80 which comes as a wheel system with its own tubulars which form part of its aero package and are included in the price, therefore we allow the Mavics to be tested with their own tyres. Of course we also tested all of these wheels out on the road and covered in total some 2,000 miles. A number of the wheel sets were also raced and they were ridden in both road and time trial bikes and on the road, same as in the wind tunnel, we were using controlled tyres. With the luxury of wind tunnel testing to give us absolute data on aerodynamic performance, on the road we are focusing on stability, braking, stiffness and the overall ride feeling. And so to our testing results, going from last to first. In last place, perhaps unsurprisingly, is the Progress Space 88. At £1,495, this was the least expensive wheel on test, I hesitate to say cheapest. But what concerned us with this wheel was its profile. It's a V-shaped rim, it's not the more rounded, blunt shape that we've become used to seeing. And at 88 millimeters, it's a slightly suspicious depth. We think that this is an open mould rim. Progress won't admit as much and the importer certainly won't, but there's little to substantiate this as being a proprietary, in-house developed wheel. The stiffness and braking are decent, but tiptoeing through a pit of rattlesnakes is less stressful than riding these wheels when there's even a breath of wind in the air. The wake from a passing car going in the opposite direction is enough to set them twitching all over the road, and frankly they're terrifying. They're so far off the pace, it's an absolute joke. In the wind tunnel, they were okay at 5 degrees, which is kind of what you might expect from a skinny wheel. At 12.5 degrees, they will last by miles. Put simply, do not bother. The Roval CLX64 was one of the biggest surprise disappointments on test. It's a hugely wide rim, so much so that we had to use really quite worn out brake pads just to fit the wheel into the tri-rig calipers of our TT bike. It pushed a 25mm tyre out to 29mm when inflated. And what was surprising was that this extreme width didn't translate into stability on the road, where the 64s were nudged around a fairly significant amount. They were well off the pace of the best and really quite unpleasant at times. The braking is pretty good for a carbon rim without a machine surface, but this becomes a double-edged sword because frankly the CLXs are so flexy, the brake rub is a near constant companion every time you're out of the saddle. A blistering wind tunnel performance might have mitigated some of these faults, but actually the Rovals were even worse there. At 5 degrees they were 14 watts behind the best, and at 12.5 degrees they were last but 1 and 25 watts off the pace. An updated version is on the way from Roval and frankly it can't come soon enough. Next up is the Profile Design 2478 at £1,800. The name refers to the width and the depth of the wheel. It's 24mm wide at the brake track, 78mm deep. 24mm isn't enormous in this company, and our 25mm tyre inflated to 26.5mm, which is wider than the rim, and that's not ideal, so you would probably want to consider a 23mm tyre if you were to purchase these. Stiffness and stability on the road are both really impressive, echoing our experiences of the 58mm version. Dry braking is also good using Profile's own pad, but the wet braking is absolutely abysmal. Anyone who's ridden carbon wheels would be familiar with that delay that you get when you first pull the lever and you have to clear water from the brake track. On these wheels, that delay is kind of all you get. The braking never really arrives. 
In the wind tunnel, the profile designs were equally modest, ranking seventh at both wind angles, and in both cases, nearer to the bottom of the table than the top in terms of their wattage required to sustain that speed. Overall, the 2478 is an unremarkable wheel set in nearly every respect, except for the web braking, which is remarkably bad. The DT Swiss 65 RRC is one of the shallowest wheel sets that we have on test. As you'd expect, that gives it a bit of a weight advantage, but surprisingly, it didn't suffer in the wind tunnel, where it ranked uh, fourth and sixth at our two wind angles uh, and really punched above its weight. At 2,000 pounds, that puts it in, uh, in pretty good stead versus some of the biggest names here. Unfortunately, there were some real issues on the road. Stability is okay, no more, no less, but braking is poor even in the dry. We're struggling for reasons to recommend them, and uh, at 2,000 pounds, they're just a bit too expensive to be this flawed. The Mavic CXR80 Tubular was claimed to be the world's fastest wheelset when it came out uh, around four years ago. It's a little bit old now, but it's still a force. At 2,050 pounds, it's slightly more expensive, but when you consider that includes a set of Mavic's own tires, which were developed to be aerodynamic as well as offer low volume resistance, it's actually a pretty strong package. The unique feature of the CXRs is the clip-in blades, which fit in between the tire and the rim to form a completely smooth shape. This should give them a significant advantage. As one of the thinnest wheel profiles on test, designed around its 23 mm tires, we expected that the CXR80 would perform better in the five degree wind angle test, where it's sort of slicing through the wind a bit more, uh, but that it might suffer at 12 and a half degrees. In fact, the opposite was true. At 12 and a half degrees, the CXR was blazingly fast second overall and just three watts behind the very fastest wheel. At five degrees, however, it was really slow, 37 watts behind the fastest wheel and plumb last. What's more, these really bad drag numbers were completely consistent across all three runs that we carried out. They simply don't work at low yaw. On the road, the stability is good, but wet braking and grip is emphatically not. The Vision Metrons are one of two mixed depth sets of wheels we have on test. And that makes them quite an interesting proposition. With an 81mm rim in the back and 55 in the front, the idea is you get most of the speed, but with a significant benefit to stability from the shallower front wheel. At £1,750, the Metrons look pretty appealing value. At 1823 grams, they'll touch on the heavy side. On the road, their weight is tangible and it does blunt performance slightly when climbing or accelerating. And at a steady speed, they feel pretty quick, but tangibly not on the pace of the very best. That's borne out in the wind tunnel, where at five and 12 and a half degrees, they were 15 and 14 watts respectively off of the pace of the fastest wheels. Overall, the Metrons are good wheels, but their biggest problem is that our runner up in this test can do everything they can do better for less. Now we get into the big guns and the Zip 808 NSWs. The 82 mm rim depth remains, but in all other respects, they've had a very thorough makeover. The grooved brake tracks are new. The carbon hubs with a clever axial clutch, disengaging free hub to reduce drag, that's new. The rim profile has been modified, so while the depth remains, stability is said to have been improved. And the dimple pattern has also been revised and now features laser graphics that are printed over the top instead of decals, which everyone always took the mick out of because they cover the dimples. On the road, the weight of 1,795 grams is always tangible, though the high stiffness helps to mitigate that. Dry braking is really good with the new grooved brake track, though surprisingly it has little effect in the wet, where they're still subject to the usual delay with carbon rims. A 25mm tyre inflates to 26mm on the 808, aligning perfectly with the brake tracks, and on the road the stability feeling is phenomenal given how deep these wheels are. It was in the wind tunnel where we had the big upset. At 5 degrees, the Zip 808 NSW was searingly fast, just one watt behind the very fastest wheel on test. And this is perhaps what we might have expect of Zip. However, at 12 and a half degrees, they were last but one, 16 watts behind the fastest wheel. Clearly by 12 and a half degrees, the 808 NSW has stalled, causing drag to significantly spike. On top of that, of the three runs that we did, this drag figure was the very best. The other two runs showed even higher drag. Clearly, by this point, the, uh, the 808 NSW is well out of his comfort zone. Overall though, this is an excellent wheel set. The handling is very good, the build quality is really impressive, and so long as it's not too windy a day, they will be very, very fast.
almost inseparable in our testing from the Zip808 NSW was the Knight 95. Knight is a young brand, a relative upstart in this game, but the 95 really impressed. It's the deepest wheel on test at 95 millimeters, unsurprisingly also the heaviest at 1,896 grams, certainly not one of the most expensive at 1,849 pounds with this uh, cheapest hub option. In the wind tunnel, the Knight 95's really impressed, making third overall on combined drag, just edging out the zips. Furthermore, the 95 was one of the most consistent wheels in the wind tunnel, ranking very well at both 5 and 12 and a half degrees, showing that this should be a wheel that will look after you very well, almost regardless of the conditions. Now you might think that a 95 mm wheel is not one you want to ride when the crosswinds are up. However, out on the road, the stability is absolutely uncanny. You can feel some side pressure from the wind, you do get nudged around a little bit, but it's always rideable. The dry braking is okay, Web braking subject to the usual delay, but then clears and bites pretty well. The weight is always tangible though, so this is not a wheel for hilly courses. However, if you're aiming at big flat drag strips, this is a very fast wheel set for the money. And so to our runner up, and by far the best value wheel set on test, the Head Jet 6.9 with a 60 and 90 millimeter combination. It's an alloy rim with a machined brake surface and a carbon fiber fairing to provide the aerodynamics. The carbon isn't structural, so it's a little bit delicate. You have to be careful when handling it. What's magical about them is how they combine these elements to such incredible effect. You might expect an alloy rimmed wheel set to be heavy, but at 1,722 grams, they're far from it. You might think that with a 60 millimeter front wheel, they would sacrifice some drag. However, this was the second fastest wheel set overall across five and 12 and a half degrees out of all 10 here, and really very close to the, the top wheel. And then we come to the payoffs that these seeming compromises give you. The 60 millimeter front wheel is fantastically stable in gusty conditions. The machined alloy brake track gives superb all weather braking to the extent that we question the need for disc brakes. In absolute terms, the Jet 6.9s were edged out by our best wheel on test. However, for value, they are untouchable. Carbon hubbed, super wide, and seriously exotic at 3,100 pounds. The NV7.8 came carrying serious expectation. However, it more than delivered, absolutely crushing this test. It was the lightest of the super deep carbon wheels above 65 millimeters at just 1,696 grams. And it was the outright fastest at both wind angles in the test. The two drag figures combined, giving it an advantage of 14 watts over its nearest rival. Performance on the road lives up to the wind tunnel. Stability is absolutely outstanding. I've ridden these wheels in some ridiculous winds and it's simply never an issue. You might feel a little bit of pressure, but your line never changes. You never get that hard stopping moment. Stiffness is also good. And in this form with enemies and carbon hubs, the weight is really low. You could even consider road racing these wheels. Even the braking sets new standards for carbon wheels. Envy's new molded textured brake track clears the water phenomenally quickly, such that there's almost no delay in wet braking from when you first pull the lever. The 7.8 is also tubeless compatible and it's designed around 25 millimeter tires. So you can have the best of everything. The low rolling resistance of a tubeless 25 millimeter tire, the grip, the comfort, and the aero. Yes, the 7.8 is hugely expensive, particularly with the option of Envy Zone carbon fiber hubs. However, if you simply want the best, this is it.